by using the Ask Question menu link at the top of the page at wowwowwow.wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen. Please come early to ask your questions. Now, on with the show. The next two hours will be full of debate, interview guests, and up-to-date news. Please join Simon and play an active role. Connecting Consciousness Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Yes, indeed, you're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Uh, good afternoon if you're in America, good evening if you're in the UK, and good morning if you're in Australia. And um, here we are. It's uh, the set. Is it the, yes, no, it's the fourth one, third one that we've done this this year. Uh, which seems to be just ticking by, you know, two weeks feels like a week. Two weeks feels like three days sometimes. So, tonight's host, Simon Parks. Good evening, Simon. How are you? Hello, JP. And right on cue, literally as you, the music stops, so the Wi-Fi begins to collapse. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, you're you're online, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm online, but um, it was funny. Right up to the end of the intro, I had uh, lots of strong bars on the uh, Wi-Fi connection, all shown green. Then it went red. Now it's gone back to amber. So you may lose me. Um, I'll just keep checking back with you to make sure I'm still on air. Right, OK. Um, now, some people have... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of being hit here. Oh, there we go. So um, let's try and reconnect that. Yep. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the situation. Um, there's a lot that goes on. There's, you know, I've got three radio streams that are running. There is Wolf Spirit Radio. If you're on a low bandwidth, uh, use Wolf Spirit Radio B. Now, some people say that there's a database error. If you have the problem with the database error, uh, just leave it for about 20 minutes. The system will reload itself. Um, but if you want to join the chat room, then go to Wolf Spirit Radio Chat dot, dot chat tango or chatango dot com. Uh, that's uh, there's a sort of you know you can get to the the, the chat room offline. You can also go to everbeyondradio.com, dot uh, com, haggishackradio dot com, uh, where we'll be uh, we're running parallel streams, so you you'll be able to hear it and uh, join in with the chat room as well. So. Simon, did you was was that all nice and clear, or, or was that uh, all all crap? Well, the, the, the amazing thing is, I can hear you really well. All right, um, but yep. I've just you're this warning sign coming up, but okay. Um, well, lovely to you know chat with you again and to speak to all the wonderful listeners, and I always remember that, of course, people hear it live, and then of course they listen to it uh, later on. Um, a couple of people have asked, and like. You know, again, we get new people all the time, thank goodness. Um, the, the, the signature tune, um, somebody did some research and worked out it was Danger Man, and they asked me, you know, did I think I was the Danger Man? And I, I had to explain, no, that's not why I've chosen it. I chose it because when I was growing up, my mother had um, insisted that I watch this serial every week with Patrick McGowan. Uh, called the Danger Man, and she said that he was a man of integrity. He was like a MI5 British agent. Um, he couldn't be bribed, and uh, you know she said that you know you you need to really grow up like him, because he doesn't sort of cave in under pressure, and you know he's very upstanding. Uh, so that's why we chose Tune, because it was um, a guy, an actor playing secret British intelligence who, unlike James Bond, um, was a man of integrity. Right, so <clears throat> that's that. I've got quite a lot of updates, uh, and I'd like to start, basically, um, with America and um, Mr. Trump. There's been a bit of um, <clears throat> misunderstanding about the situation at Standing Rock. Many people have said that um, Trump has 
basically stuck a knife in the back of the um, the local people and has approved the oil pipeline. And I just wanted to um, absolutely give the facts and then people can go and do their own research. What Trump has done <clears throat> is said that it's too big a decision for him too big a decision for any one person and he's kicked it to the courts so um, both sides will have to make their case to the law courts but what Trump has said is that he will uh, not approve the pipeline if any part of the steel for the pipeline is made uh, from metal elsewhere now, can you still hear me, JP, or have you gone off? You're perfectly clear, Simon, and uh, Walter oh, Wall okay, speaks up at all. So just walk, speak okay, with Karen. confidence, and I'll, I'll tell you if you, if you go off right. Well, you won't, because if I can't hear you, then you won't be able to tell That's me. true, that's true. I'll not, put my camera on. That's why I'm checking back. Um, so basically, uh, at the moment, there is no um, fabrication process in the States to make pipelines. All this steel for pipelines is brought in from elsewhere. So someone has got to set up a factory in the United States to build pipeline. Um, that's not really going to happen very quickly, is it? So it's a very clever move to kick the situation into the long grass, and basically the courts will have to decide it. So that's the fact. That's, that's the situation there. there is. The big news is Antarctica. Um, uh, and that does play into to, to, to Trump at the moment. The plan that Donald Trump has is to reinvigorate the United States to make it the number one country again. But it would take between seven years and ten years, that's the estimate, to put America back in the driving position. He doesn't have that length of time, and he has set a plan to do all of that in 18 months and the only way he can do that in 18 months is to release alien technology but they're not calling it alien technology it's known as exotic technology that's what it's called in, in the intelligence services uh, and he wants to release some of this hidden uh, technology to the corporations so that they can get going very quickly on driving um, America forward and the reason that he feels he's in a position to do that is because, uh, as people will know, there's been a lot of activity in Antarctica, both before the Christmas holidays and continuing now. There's going to be a release of very, uh, it's very ancient technology, but it's very new because the concept of that technology has not been appreciated on the planet. And that is going to be released to the American government very soon. That means that the exotic technologies that the, the Americans already hold, in comparison, will be outdated. It is those technologies that they're going to give to the, uh, their friends in, in corporate America to start uh, the process of um, making the states um, you know, successful again. Uh, running up to the Christmas holiday, we had the, the Pope visit Antarctica, we had Buzz Aldrin, we had the Vice President from the old administration, um, all attempting to try and um, come to an arrangement, a deal, and of course we have a new uh, President in at the moment, so that's what we should expect to see, there'll be no fanfare, there'll be no uh, unveiling of modern technologies, all will happen is suddenly we will be told um, we've done this, we've built this, and we'll be thinking, well, hang on, that would have taken three years to do that. How come you've done it in six weeks? So that will be, 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 be what's happening. Um, the, the point about Antarctica is that there are more than one race. There is more than one race based down there. Some of them are particularly unhelpful, um, very, very hostile, and others of them are broadly sympathetic. This is to the human cause. So it wasn't just simply going around, sitting around the table. There were a number of these um, meetings that had to occur. But there was one meeting, to my knowledge, where everybody, regardless of their position, um, in terms of whether they were friend or foe, actually attended uh, that meeting. So there was one meeting where everyone sat around the table. <clears throat> and that's where this has come from. So that that's quite exciting. Um, you know, I always like it when the mainstream media start to um, say what we're saying. Uh, we know we're getting it right, 
uh, when the mainstream are being forced into a position where they have to start telling the truth. And in Great Britain, and it always seems to be Great Britain, I don't know why the states aren't doing this, but again, um, the, the Mail, the Daily Mail is a British newspaper, it's an establishment, one of the top newspapers, top in terms of numbers, not in terms of quality. And the mail has, like everything else, has an electronic version and a paper version. So what these guys do is they run their difficult stories in the electronic version, <clears throat> but they don't cover it in the paper version. Now, if people can go and have a look at the electronic version of the mail, uh, they will actually see that the article on there says, and I've actually copied the headline down, uh, tech, short for technology, tech billionaires are building bolt holes in New Zealand. What do they know that we don't? And then it goes on to name some people who are um, fabulously wealthy on the planet who are getting ready to disappear. Now, one name that people may know is, is Peter Thiel or Thiel, depending how you want to pronounce his name. Uh, he was one of the key founders of PayPal and in the very early days of Facebook, he put a lot of money into that. Now he's, he's incredibly wealthy. Um, and he actually supported Donald Trump during the presidential election because the Clintons had turned against him. So he thought, well, I can't let the Clintons get in because they'll, they'll come for me. So I'll support, um, I'll support Mr. Trump. Now what um, Peter Thiel has done is he's bought 477 acres of land or real estate in New Zealand. This is where the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films were, so it's near that area. Um, and he's sort of um, preparing a nice sort of getaway. What's interesting about him is that uh, when you uh, apply to live in New Zealand, as he's done, you normally have to be resident in the country for three years. And then you can get a passport and become a citizen. Well, the New Zealand government have waived that and just given him a passport and made him a joint nationality. He's now a New Zealand citizen. There's been a lot of um, um, annoyance from local people who've said, well, hang on, you know, my sister had to wait three years to come in. How come this man has just got in? It's because he's fabulously wealthy. It's very much like billionaires who've been investing in Bitcoin. Uh, there will be a time when countries just want these people living in their borders. If, if there's an individual who's got huge amounts of money in electronic Bitcoin, which will not devalue in the same way that um, currency will, then countries are fighting now <clears throat> over trying to entice these people to come and live in their borders. And that's, that's taking place as well. Another person who's bought land in New Zealand is none other than that... Uh, a very uh, in-your-face man, James Cameron, who made the Avatar, directed the Avatar films, and, of course, the Terminator films. And time and time again uh, in the Terminator films, you know, we are given um, in plain sight warnings or, or alerts to what is to come. So James Cameron has done that. Uh, in the last year, um, something like 1,400 square miles of real estate land have been sold to Americans and Australians and that's four times more than last year uh, the year before so what that means is that there's a flight uh, to these places because they think that they're incredibly uh, safe um, the newspaper says these people are running because you know there'll be a nuclear war or this that and the other but the, the point is when you read into the, the article itself what these people are actually saying is there's going to be a, a, an economic crash. Um, some of these people, uh, there's a guy called Steve Huffman, who created the Reddit site, and he went and had very, very expensive laser eye surgery because he didn't want to be left in a world where um, he was vulnerable. Uh, literally, he didn't want to, to have glasses in case there was a breakdown in law and order, um, or there wasn't you know, the possibility of buying glasses for your eyes in. That's what he did. Another guy, Marvin, um, who's, it's not unusual for Americans to hoard up guns, but he's took archery lessons because he wanted to be able to hunt 
animals silently without you know alerting people to the, the gun shop because again he feels that there is a breakdown of the law and order coming um you know so it, this is incredibly widespread and um, just finally on this one the guy called Re- reed uh um uh hoffman who was a venture capitalist and was interviewed by the new yorker magazine and uh, they were asking him about you know this sort of preparing for the worst and uh, i'm going to paraphrase it now because i'm not going to read it out but basically he said look once you get into the meeting you do the masonic handshake freemason special handshake once you've done that then the person says look are you interested i've got some old missile bunkers that we've turned into luxury apartments which are bomb proof um it's got all its own electricity water heating you'd be all right there for a couple of years do, do you want that so the incredibly wealthy are on mass now providing themselves with um, secure accommodation for them and their families um now whilst that's not a new thing what is new is the the the, the amount of people now uh, nearly everybody is thinking about it or has done it who's got huge amounts of money so uh it doesn't mean the world is going to end but what it means is that these people are being advised by their bankers or you know whoever is their their manager and saying you need to make provision because we think that there's a serious situation occurring and it's the same old story isn't it that that the ordinary man and woman on the street hasn't a clue they go about their daily lives they're worried about their cup of coffee and what's football game tonight um you know will they get home on time from work and you know at the other end of the spectrum the guys sort of saying okay well we're going to need this this and this and we're going to stock up with food it's it's always been this way that the elite have access to the information and everyone else doesn't so that's why you know it's important that um you know people can um try and uh, give the truth so that others can can um, make their own decisions and so moving on from that uh i can only do what i do and jp can only do what he does because people very kindly donate and donating keeps us not just going it keeps us independent so it's that time of the show again where i'm going to thank uh, ada jockin serge arthur mary alexander jeff kevin natalie bruno claudia um ken simone a holy ground that's a good one isn't it uh stanley stanley that was a, a really nice donation that was quite big and, and thank you alexandre yours was as well um and bakel but i have to thank jennifer um who jennifer made quite a big donation um and that was wonderful because it it paid off my um phone bill my cell phone bill um and put put gas in the tank petrol in the car and you know it it it, it helped me out so you know to everybody who donates you are keeping me going but you're keeping the battle going you're actually keeping the the the, the fact that people can actually stand up to the system and say look we're not going to break the law that's not what we're after what we want to do is to actually get the truth out there and let people make the choice and make the decision and we won't be shut up and you know they're not going to put a bullet in my head um but they will try and uh, crush me economically so those people who donate to me you know you are keeping me going and you know i'm i'm incredibly grateful so that's the round up of the news um uh, it's quiet at the moment because uh you know we, we we're going to be looking at march i've always said march january february march i think we're going to be some interesting interesting things happening in march we've got an election in holland i think where the far right party may well win if kurt wilders wins then he wants his country out of the european union we've got um potential vote coming um in italy and uh, we've got an interesting vote potentially coming in france and in greece so if one of those countries was to elect somebody who wanted to follow the brit exit uh, it is it is the d- death of of the european union and um mr trump's own european ambassador who he appointed recently said 
why would I want to talk to the European Union? I don't think it'll be around in 12 months' time. So even the ambassador from the American government to the European Union is telling the European Union, you probably won't be here in a year's time. And, and he was, he's a professor, actually. And he was saying, look, I'll probably be doing deals with country on country, not on group on group. And then he was asked in an interview about the euro, the currency of the European Union, and he basically said, you know, wouldn't give it much chance at all. So it's the same old story. The news is out there. But so many people either blinkered or, or hoodwinked or are fearful of doing anything outside of their normal little routine. They are not doing themselves any favors because they're not finding out the truth. And it's these people that are going to have a shock when the changes come. So, okay, that's it, I think, JP. As long as I'm still on air, let's go for some questions. Still, uh, wall to wall there, Simon, hang on. Alright, how come I can't hear myself? Uh, hello, hello. Okay.